Hi kids. Okay, today we're doing lesson 12 in Eureka Math and the objective is to multiply a decimal fraction by a single digit whole number, okay, like this, decimal fraction, a single digit whole number, including using estimation to confirm the placement of the decimal point. So really what they mean is we're just estimating, we want to get close to the answer. And where would you put the decimal point in a place where it makes sense? So really what you're trying to do here is not pay too much attention to the decimal fraction. Really look at the whole numbers, see where that will get you, and then guess the number that is closest. Now it makes a huge difference if you drop off a place value position or if you add a place value position. So these are super easy. So roughly two times four is eight. Even if you round it up, three times four is 12. So I'm gonna be pretty close to 10 on either side of 10. And so that is my estimated answer. And again, they don't care about what the actual answer is. We're saying, let's just estimate today. <clears throat> so in the same way, you've got roughly three times seven, which is about 21. Now, this is way too big, and this is huge, and this is super tiny, only having two. So pay really close attention to what the whole number is. This is the obvious answer. You don't have to do the actual standard algorithm to get this. You just have to estimate by choosing the reasonable product. Eight times six is 48. I want something that's around 48. Four is not close to 48. 481, way too big. And this, like, pff, whatever. Nine times five, 45. I gotta roll this up, roll it up. Nine times five is 45. This does not matter. Find something around 45. 49 is close to 45. Even if I went up to nine times six, it's 54. We're still only at two digits. This one whole number, too small, super too small, way too big. So these should be real easy on which one to circle. And notice today I'm using the book that's already done. So that should make it easy. I don't have any notes today, but we'll, uh, we'll talk in class tomorrow um, before we get started. We won't have too many notes, if any. So then we get to the word problems. Now this is where obviously you can see we have a little bit of work to do. So Pedro is building a spice rack with four shelves that are each 55 hundredths of a meter long. At the hardware store, I always like to say Home Depot right down the street, Pedro finds that he can only buy the shelving in whole meter lengths. And we talked about this, like you can't always buy the exact length. So exactly how many meters of shelving does Pedro need? We will set it up here and solve. And look at another question. Since he can only buy whole number lengths, how many meters of shelving should he buy? Then you have to justify your thinking. So when you set it up, you can do the 55 hundredths times four like we did uh, yesterday and today. So set it up in the area model, four, times 55 hundredths. You don't need this here. It's just here as a crutch to help you remember to put the zero in the ones place. Write your unit form up on top, 5 tenths, 5 hundredths. 4 times 5 tenths is 20 tenths. 4 times 5 hundredths is 20 hundredths. Then standard form, remember, you have to write that so that we can work with it or calculate it, we've got to add this up. So um, zero ones, and then 20 tenths, the zero would end in the tenths place. So this is really just 2.0. 20 hundredths would be 0 0.20 because the zero ends in the hundredths place. Okay, um, then you, find, you can do the standard algorithm over here, because we are working on that as well, 0 0.55 times 4. 5 times 4, 20, carry the 2, 4 times 5, 20, plus 2, 2, carry the 2, 4 times 0, 0, plus 2, 2. So you can see all that's over here. Now this is exactly how much Pedro needs. 
But if you walk into Home Depot and you say, well, I would like two and 20 hundredths meter of shelving, they'll be like, ha ha ha, you're funny, go away. And they'll say, you can buy this in whole meter lengths. So you have to get more than you need because if you only get two meters, you won't have enough. And so you have to bump it up and get three meters of shelving so they don't laugh at you. You wouldn't want to be embarrassed at Home Depot. Now for the next one, for number three, we have Marcel and he's riding his bike to school and back two days a week. Now I have it here and always, always make a picture, label everything. Here's Tuesday to school and back. Don't forget, he has to go both ways. We don't want to leave him there overnight. Thursday to school and back. Now if he lives 3.62 kilometers away from school, then each of these trips is 3.62 kilometers. So this is Tuesday to school and back, and this is Thursday to school and back. The gym teacher wants to know about how many kilometers he bikes in a week. Marcel's math teacher wants to know exactly how many kilometers he bikes in a week. So what should he tell each teacher? Show your work. So uh, if you set up the area model, You've got your three and 62 hundredths, three ones, six tenths, two hundredths times the four days, one, two, three, four. And uh, if you multiply four times three, then you have 12 ones, which looks like this. It's all smashed in. Six tenths times four for 24 tenths, which looks like this four in the tenths place, two in the ones place, 2.4. And then four times two is eight hundredths in the hundredths place. Don't forget the zero in the tenths place and the decimal and a zero in the ones. And then you can add all those together, adding. Okay, now approximately, what is that? Well, that's about 14 kilometers. That's for the uh, gym teacher. Okay, and then exactly for the math teacher, 14 and 48 hundredths. So that's how you do these. Take your time, set them up, make your models, draw everything you can. Do repeated addition, prove your work, just make sure you understand what's happening and label everything. Finally, the Poetry Club had its first bake sale. <clears throat> and they made, ooh, they made a profit. Look at that. $79.35. The club members are planning to have four more bake sales. Right on. Leslie said, if we make the same amount at each bake sale, we'll earn $3,967.50. Woohoo! Wow, that's a lot of money. Peggy said, no way, Leslie. We'll earn $396.75 after five bake sales. Use estimation to help Peggy explain why Leslie's reasoning is inaccurate. Well, you just look at that and go, wow, how did it get so big? Show your reasoning using words, numbers, or pictures. So if you have $79.35 times five, you really have something close to 80 times five. If you simply do eight times five for 40 and the extra place value position, you can see you should be around $400, not $4,000. So hundreds times one, if you talk about just the unit form, would be hundreds. Uh, and I'm looking at this going hundreds, hundreds, not hundreds. I don't know. We'll fix that. Um, and so really, like, you just want to get the right place value position. You don't want to be so far out that you're a whole 10 times greater. And uh, so then we have the five digits right here and six digits. So it's like clearly something is wrong here. So you can look at the, the amount of digits to kind of help you. But anyway, this is in the hundreds amount and this is in the thousands and this is way too big. Okay, and so um, that's just the reasoning. That's all there is for today. So we will work on this a little bit more tomorrow, and I'll see you soon. Bye.